Wouldn't it be funny to have a project with British milliners putting hats on statues? Grazia needs to take it on, make it happen and own it. She said, I've come up with a fantastic idea. And it was to do with the Mayor of London's office, the idea of hats and what was going to happen for the Cultural Olympiad. When you think we've started to look at maybe 70 statues at the beginning, you get an idea of the enormity of the project. I'm sure it's removed a few years after Paula's life expectancy. Fashion is interpreted as a kind of exclusive world, but I think this was a fun way for Grazia magazine to uh, make it inclusive. I really wanted to have everybody from somebody like Sophie, who's just won the hat competition, to a company like Locks, and everybody in between. I think what's interesting and what the general public like is the surprise element to come across something that's unexpected. There'd be many challenges. When the moulds came in, we had to reproportion and rethink everything. One of the other challenges with the project was that uh, the hats were going to have to survive outdoors in, um, in any kind of weather. And uh, I think one of the biggest problems potentially was uh, rain, but I think people have had to work around that. And then I believe with the wind tunnel, then that um, it can be a hurricane and they'll still stay on. Everyone has been working away like bees in a hive trying to make this project work and the practicalities are extraordinary. Trying to avoid at one stage on a particularly fragile and very, very lofty statue, a kestrel nest which was discovered at the last moment that was on the foot of the pediment of Nelson. They have had an expert watching the birds for about three weeks now. Um, I think it's because they need to, the chicks need to be able to actually hatch and fly before we would do anything to disturb them. It actually has um, far more problems um, with health and safety uh, than any, I think than any of the other statues. I've long ago given up worrying about the limits of the capabilities of the production team. We just throw these problems at them and they kind of shrug them off and say, oh don't worry we've got a crane for that or oh don't worry we've got a piece of kit for that or oh don't worry we can just measure that up with a laser and think, fabulous. The guerrilla evening, I imagine it as being a kind of full-scale assault. <laughs> on the landmark statues of London. I love guerrilla millinery. I think, you know, there should be much more guerrilla millinery in the world. We will have men in high-vis jackets and girls who have great heads for heights and they will be running around London placing hats on statues. And when London wakes up on the morning of the 30th, their favourite statues, they will be adorned with these incredible headpieces. I expect people to be chuckling all over the city. I hope they laugh and have fun. I think that's what millinery is all about. The message is enjoyment and celebration of what is an incredible experience for London. It would just be such a missed opportunity if fashion wasn't in some way at the heart of the London Festival 2012. It really had to have a place there. British millinery talent is vibrant and alive and so significant has got such a contribution to make. The project was conceived so that British milliners could really show their talent to the world. <laughs>